ample note. That's a lot of notes. It's an ample amount of notes, actually. Do I know how definitions work? Is this app any good? Let's look at it. So ample note is a pretty simple markdown task and calendar application with web app, mobile, Mac, phone, and the ability to easily take stuff from other apps and bring it in. Looking at the plans really quick, you'll see that there is a free version, which lets you have encrypted notes, an unlimited amount of notes, tasks, and calendars, but the pro version lets you get synced external calendars and the unlimited version pretty much just levels things up to make it more good with things like a vault note for sensitive content. I like the free option for personal, but I'm not sure about the founder option with $20 a month, giving you just some early access to features, voting on the roadmap. I mean, I know I'm like pretty into productivity amps, but 20 bucks a month for notes. Yeah, how about no notes? <laughs> more like no. All right, I'll stop. Going into this application, you'll see that there is a quick jot section. It's just like little quick things you can put down. So today is the 21st, but this is the 20th. So let's just put a little note here. And you'll see this is almost like a little checkbox that happened. It's a task. You can do things like assign dates to it. You can set it as priorities, whether it be urgent, important, urgent, important, none. And then even just in here, you'll see that if I do a markdown situation where I do do things like that and then press space, it'll do that. Or I can do a bullet point and you're also able to hide these as well. So I can hide this until certain days and then you can go through all your quick daily jots here. And then you also have the ability to see suggestions for things and toggle these on and off. But in the notes section, you'll see that it sort of has the ability to make daily notes here and you can have different types of tags associated with things. So that was the daily jots, but if I make a new note, You'll see that I can add a tag to like make a grocery list or something like that. So grocery list, and then I, I'm gonna put a little date associated with it, 821. And on the top right, you'll see you can publish this, apply vault encryption. Now this is if you have the higher levels, you can add collaborators, more options here. You can archive it, download it, lock it, prevent auto archiving and add to shortcuts, which would just add it to, we go here, add to the shortcut section here. Then you'll see there's also a tag section right at the bottom of this area as well. It's going into this grocery list. Let's make that a tag. So if I go back to the home page, you'll see that there's a grocery list option here. Now you see there's a lot of the normal stuff that you can do by like making it a bulleted list or checkbox like that, what I was doing earlier. It doesn't actually seem like there's a slash H1 functionality or anything like that. You're just gonna have to like press it here, but maybe I am incorrect on that. And there seems to be some styling options as well. So when I click on this, let's do some typing example H1. And then if I press enter, it seems to get rid of the header. If I do this, you can hover over it and do some different things like add rich footnote image, description, example, description here, works of groceries I need to get. So apples, bananas, grapes. And then if I take one of these and like, I want to find apples, Aldi, again, for some reason, if I wanted to hyperlink this, press control K, hyperlink this, you can even add footnotes to it, like the description or an image. So if I save this image and go here to the downloads, add this image here, it'll be in like the description area, which is pretty cool. It's very similar to Obsidian, the fact that there is no slashes or anything like that, but I really prefer there to be prompts with the backslash like there is with Notion or even ClickUp or anything like Coda or something like that. You can add shortcuts to different tasks, groups, so do this week, high value. So the way that this works is it's filtered by certain things. So filter task by note reference. So I do like the fact that this exists because I could like add tasks all over the place, but then it would filter to the specific ones. As in, if I took some tasks over here, made them urgent and important and started it today. And if I went here, you'll see that it'll add it. And if I went here, you'll see it'll add the high value one as well. And then with the calendar, you're actually able to go in and see the different times that maybe these things would be at. So you can actually change the task to specific times, which is very nice for daily planner things. And you can do recurring tasks in here, uh, whether it be on a fixed schedule or when the task is completed. So say it's completed today, I can do a hide until time or I can do one day after completed. So say complete this here, go to the next day, it would recur right there. Or you can just have it be on a fixed schedule so that it would just keep recurring at a certain amount of time every day, every week every month. You can have reminders, set it to urgent or important, and you can move around this calendar, like a four day view, then a week view, and then a calendar view. So it's got a weekly calendar when Notion doesn't. 
And if I had a higher version of this software, I would actually be able to import calendars on here, which is nice. So like this external calendars there, I could add a Google account right here. So you'll see that it has the different calendar options here. I can add another one if I wanted to. I could connect calendars here. So I can connect like the Rise Productive one. Just connect calendar. And if I went back to here and I'm in the work, out of these two, the work or the personal. You can add as many as you want from here, so it would pull it in. So this is a little bit of a daily planner, a little bit of a daily note-taking application mixed into one. And you can put notes right on these calendar events, which is pretty convenient. And then also, if you wanna switch from another application into this, what you can do is you can import data. So let's say I wanna import from Markdown, right? I got literally, let's take this script, for example, from Notion, take this, do an export to Markdown and CSV. Export and say I wanted to do a import, select a file, start import. So I'll upload the zip file here and it'll process it. So it took one in and let's see what this guy ended up doing for us. So right here, the script came through. And while obviously I'm always the kind of person who has a ridiculous amount of checkboxes, if this actually had bullet points, it would have worked in that sense. But it had the title brought in here. Uh, I guess it had the file name like this. So that's a little weird. Uh, so you may have to like tweak the file name when it imports, but not a bad look when it comes to easily importing things from other applications. I'm sure you could do it in larger bulk than what I just did. That's a pretty convenient option for you. But what would even be more convenient is if you checked out this video on how to improve your productivity even more. I mean, that'd be great.